Welcome to Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors Tuesday night prayer school. We're so excited to have you join us. We encourage you to invite a friend or two because if it's good to you, it's going to be good to them. And we also want you to uh, like, share, and subscribe on our YouTube channel, EOFKC. So we, again, we're excited to have you join us. And tonight I'm going to continue on with um, the teaching, maintaining our first love, maintaining our first works, uh, maintaining that fire, that zeal you had when you first believed, right? So we want to look at um, the encouragement that we get from Yeshua in order to do that. When we were talking about it before, we were talking about the fact that Yeshua left us a strong message and a warning in Hosanna Revelation chapter two. And he's telling us to consider our ways. You know, look at how far you uh, drifted away from that zeal you had when you first believed. And here you are today. I need you to reignite that fire. I need you to get that fire going again before uh, you get a result you don't want because uh, something else has got your attention and it's going to cost you everything. So in Revelation or Hazan rather, in the Hebrew as it should be, chapter two, verses four through five, Yeshua is saying, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you've fallen, repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. So he's giving us a lot here in a nutshell, uh, as far as the the uh, conviction, hey, you, you're not doing what you used to do. Um, if we're in a relationship, somebody might say, you don't love me like you used to. So, and essentially that's what he's saying. Why aren't you loving me the same way? Where's that zeal? Where's that fire? Where's that attention? Where's that attentiveness? We've got to make sure that we maintain that fire um, that we had in the beginning. And thankfully we can reignite that fire. We can uh, cause that uh, ember to blaze again, right? And that's what he's telling us, you can do it. So this is how you do it. Consider how far you've fallen, repent and do the things you did at first. That's a wonderful thing that he um, tells us. And why is that important? In, in, uh, I'm reminding of the scripture that tells that uh, says that we are, uh, the righteous are a city on a hill. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, people see that city on the hill from wherever they are, especially when you think about it at nighttime uh, in the dark and you're trying to find your way, but that city on the hill is pulling you forward, right? It's pulling you to its light. It's pulling you to its destination. And so that's what we are to be, that light um, representing that knowledge of the kingdom in this world. And so therefore, if we are burning bright, we're on fire, we're fervent for uh, the Father, for his word, for his ways, for his presence, we are going to be successful. She was not going to look at us and go, where was your first love? You know, what happened? He's not going to be questioning us in that way. But fortunately, when we get off, we can look at this scripture and be reminded of, okay, this is where I was. Now I need to look at how things uh, happened or how I got off and I need to repent. I need to change my mind and uh, get back on track. Yeah, we need to uh, get back on track. So we need to understand that um, the Father is committed to us. Yeshua is committed to us. That his mercy and his grace are encamped about us. And so uh, his mercy is his, his power to change, right? And when he's talking about get back to our first love, love needs to reveal the heart of the Father. So we are the instruments on the earth that reveal the heart of the Father. And that's a wonderful thing. And so we do that by living out the kingdom lifestyle because now we're showing forth the father's heart, his original idea, his original plan, his original purpose and intent for mankind. So by living out the kingdom lifestyle, the kingdom culture, we're showing the world by example, this is what the father intended for everybody. You know, the scripture tells us that the father has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's the, quite the opposite from the world, fear, fear, fear. I can't get off fear. I, I have a couple other words I wanna say, but fear is sticking out in my mind. It's not power because fear is powerless. 
although it can drive you to do some heinous things. And, and fear is a demonic spirit that we got to get out of our life. So we want to focus on the Father's view, the Father's heart. He's given us a spirit of love, a mind of a mind full of power and soundness, and a life full of power and soundness. If we stay connected to the tree of life, if we are doing the things um, that the kingdom government mandates us to do as kingdom ambassadors, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then the other thing, if you go to the next scripture, just as a quick review, uh, we want to consider where did the zeal go? Um, when we look at um, zeal, um, the scripture reference here is Yochanan Aleph of 1 John um, 2 and 16. And it reads, do not love the world, anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world, and the world's desires pass away. But whoever does the will of the Father lives forever. So we see in that last sentence that if we continue in the worldly ways, we're going to pass away. We're going to pass off the scene. But if we don't continue to do the will of the Father and do it well, we're going to live forever. So there's a promise even in that uh, whole scripture. You know, and it's telling us two things can happen. You know, and in, in, um, <laughs> I'm still learning the Hebrew keys of Revelation, thankfully. And um, let me, well, I'm going to see my book. Yes, I do. Here it is. Hebrew, Hebrew keys of Revelation written by Dr. Smith. And in it, we are learning the correct uh, names for the scripture books. And so I want to make sure that I get this correct. And if you'll give me just a moment, uh, Devarim, that did come to mind initially, so I should trust my, my first thought. Um, the book of Deuteronomy it tells us to choose life. I'm, I'm, the Elohim is telling us in the book of Devarim, choose life. You know, I'm laying before you life, I'm laying before you death. That's not a correct translation because Father's not going to lay death before us. He's saying these are your choices, right? But I want you to choose life. And so that's what this scripture is also saying too. Um, in 1 John 2.16, when it says the desires of the world pass away, but whoever does the will of the Father lives forever. You have to choose life. If you don't choose life and you choose the way of the world, you're choosing death. So we're assassinating our own selves and we don't want to do that. So that's why Yeshua is calling it to our attention. Hey, you've, you've, you've drifted away from your first love. You know, consider your ways and get back to doing what you did before, what made you successful and got you to where you are um, as a strong citizen in the kingdom. But now your, your, your fire's waning out. We got to get that fire back. Get that, get that fire back. So let's look at, um, we also looked at rather uh, some word meanings and we were looking at zeal, fervor, eagerness or some of the word meanings for zeal, um, heat, blaze, when we talk about getting that fire back. So that's a person who's zealous is a person on fire. That's the common day saying, that person's on fire. Man, that person's hot. <laughs> and that's what we wanna be for the kingdom. We wanna be hot, we wanna be a blaze. We want to be so connected, so committed. Nothing can cut in. Nothing can get us distracted. Nothing can get us off track. Or if something attempts to, and maybe we falter for a moment, but because we're so connected, immediately we can get back on track and cast that thing out. And it does not um, cause us to start and stop, start and start and start and stop. So that's why zeal is important. That's why commitment uh, is important. And we looked at being hooked, and we looked at Zadi, the strong desire pulled toward. Zadi is spelled Zadi Dalit uh, Yad in the, um, as we understand from the um, Keys of Revelation study guide written by Dr. Larry Smith here at Empowerment of Faith. It's so important because we understand that we have to go back to the original Hebrew. It's not just a gimmick, it's not just a thing. We want to know the original thought we need to go back to the original language to understand the original thought, not with the transliterations, not with the uh, translations of 
uh, the Bible called Book of Books that contains the scripture. And that's a whole nother subject. So go to our YouTube channel, uh, listen to our teaching, and you'll learn a whole lot more about that. We got to uncolonize our thinking so that we can get to the real meaning and we can even begin to see ourselves as we read these translations where they don't work. Okay. So hooked, zoddy, strong desire, pull toward. Uh, to be hooked by desire. So it means a strong desire to access the power of the kingdom. And that's what Yeshua wants us to maintain at all time, that strong desire to um, connect and stay connected uh, to him. And so after we consider all of these things, what's the next step? We got to repent, okay? So we want to repent. That means uh, Matthew, or Matthew 4 and 7 says from that time, talking about Yeshua, Yeshua began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And why do I put that scripture here? Because that's the first message he ever taught. Repent. Public message. Repent. For the new government of the kingdom is back in place and it's all up in your face. And so now you have a choice. You've got to accept it or change. Right? So he's saying change the way that you're thinking. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to after considering our ways, we've got to repent. So we want to get out religion. We want to get out worldly thoughts. Uh, we want to get out traditions, anything that we um, allow the Holy Spirit to show us that's been tripping us up. We now can um, counsel with the Holy Spirit to get that out of the way, right? We can apply the law of meditation by not only reading the word, but then thinking about the word and then being quiet and listening to the Holy Spirit lead us um, and guide us. We can also just stop doing whatever it is that's not right, okay? That's the first thing, just stop. Second thing, let's get it back in the word. Let's now remember those first things, you know, come out of the world, be separate, do not touch the unclean, do not call, uh, what's unholy, holy. They do not a lot today. Many things that are unholy are being called holy. Many relationships that are unholy are being called holy. Um, governments, you know, people have this false thinking about, you know, praying for the government and, and um, just on and on we can go. But we got to understand from the father's heart what his thoughts are about all of this and then align ourselves with that. So that's why the scripture tell us, let a man examine himself. It means changing your source of thought, you know, considering your ways, then making the necessary change. And then we've got to remember that Yeshua desires, desires rather, all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of truth. But we got to understand what truth is, we talk, is he talking about? He's talking about the truth of the kingdom. Remember, he said, repent, because a new government's here. And so, okay, there's a new government. What does that mean? Well, we got to find out. We got to find out what the government of the kingdom is, what the culture of the kingdom is, because every government has a culture, what the laws of the kingdom are. And those things are laid out for us in the scriptures. They're going to tell us everything we need to know. We just need to um, search it out as good scholars of the kingdom, as good ambassadors of the kingdom, because it's ambassadors who represent our government here on this earth. So we need to know what our government stands for, what its policies are, what its laws are. And so that's what we just have to do. We have to go back and review, all right? And then there's no mixing of kingdom living with the culture of the world. You know, that was one of the things back in uh, Hazana Revelation chapter two that Yeshua was doing. He was telling them where they were off, where they were off in the world, especially when you look at the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, they were mixing the culture with the world. Uh, each one of the churches that he was addressing, they had something potentially that um, they needed to, um, he was showing them where they were, okay? Whether they were off or whether they weren't as strong as they need to be, um, that's a good study. Just go back and look at those um, seven churches and how Yeshua was interacting with them, telling them where they um, were successful and where they needed to change. And so we just want to look at that in our own lives. Where can we be successful? Uh, where can we um, change? What can we do 
to um, bring ourselves back into alignment to his image, right? Because in Bereshit, the scripture tells us that he created us in his image and in his likeness. And so we always want to emulate the father in all ways, in spirit and in truth. And we don't want to be neglectful, okay? So we don't want to be neglectful, lazy in the important things. So some areas to look at are, have I been neglecting the word? Um, so far involved in worldly pursuits, I can't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit or the voice of my born again spirit. Am I neglecting areas of service and ministry? What is uh, the Father um, given me to do in my local, in the kingdom? And am I neglecting that? Am I forsaking the assembly, getting together with the congregation when it meets? You know, whether it be on Zoom, whether it be in person, whether it be on another social media platform. Am I just off doing my own thing? I think ah, I'll get it later. Am I neglecting the giftings the Father's placed in me? What has he given you to do um, aside from making the earth look like heaven, heaven? Within that mandate, what has he given you to do? Are you a teacher? Are you a pastor? Are you a prophet? Are you an evangelist? What are you? Are you a minister? What are you neglecting that? So neglect makes us a target for deception by seducing spirits. And those seducing spirits hold people captive to do their work. So Yeshua is warning us, snap out of it before this happens to you. And so we, want, we also don't want to quit what works. If it's worked in the beginning, it'll continue to work, right? Don't quit with work. You tells us, Yeshua tells us to do what we did at first. Do the first works. Ask yourself, what are some of the things I did at first when I first saw the light? Um, acknowledge receiving the kingdom. Zealous in prayer, zealous in Bible study, forsaking assembly, never. Always talking about the kingdom, excited about the kingdom. You know, um, it's just one of those things we just need to get as we repent, get back in the word, reinvigorate our prayer life, we're going to find that that revives, that um, is still present. And we've got to understand that what Elohim wants us to do or accomplish on this earth, um, and then in understanding that, we have to understand how he sees us is what I'm trying to say. So on the next slide, we'll see that he sees us as a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He created us um, as such. And so in Kepha, a left or first Peter two and nine, and you are chosen a royal priesthood, a set apart holy nation who do what? Inherit the kingdom. So as we walk in righteousness and holiness, we inherit the kingdom. So as such, we represent the territory, the country, the king, and his government as ambassadors on the earth. He's made us sovereigns, the sign of Revelation 5 and 10 says, kings and priests to our Elohim, and we reign upon the earth. We're making earth look like heaven. So once we get ourselves back in alignment with the kingdom of heaven, once we repent, once we consider how far we've fallen, repented, got ourselves back into our right place and position, we can now work with power in the kingdom, right? Um, let's look at uh, Kepha Aleph or 1 Peter 3 and 12. It says, for the eyes of Yahweh are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers, but his face is against those who do evil. So when we repent, we don't have a stain of unrighteousness on us, but righteousness. And so now our prayers have power. People get healed, demons are cast out. Yes, uh, we can speak and get results and hear um, by speaking and using our language of fire. So things happen when we pray. We produce the power, the evidence of the kingdom. So we wanna make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do. What does our elder brother and high priest tell us to do? Consider your ways, repent. We want to do that. Uh, Marcus 16 and 17 tells us that these signs or evidence will accompany those who believe. And that's important for us to understand. I didn't put that scripture reference up, but note it, Mark is 16 and verse 17. And these signs or evidence will accompany those who believe. In my authority, in my power, they will drive out demons. They will speak their language of fire. Um, 
They will not be hurt by deadly things. Uh, they will lay hands upon the sick and the sick will be made well. Something we've gotten away from, calling upon the um, elders or the pastor of the church to come and lay hands on us when we're sick so that we can receive healing instantaneously. I remember once when I was in Trinidad, I um, one of my second trip out of the country and I was sick, I had a fever. And I remember the scripture, it came to my memory. And so I, I used it, um, I believed it. I did what it said. I called the pastor, the deacons, and they came up, they laid hands on me, prayed for me. And I wanna say within an hour, my fever left me. I was up eating food like nothing ever happened out on the town from that day forward. Okay, because that was a church, excuse me, a church gathering. And during that church gathering, you know, I got there, I was sick, I couldn't participate in things. But once I um, enacted what the scripture said by believing it, um, I did have hands laid on me. I did receive the prayer and faith and I was healed. And from that time on during that particular trip, I had no problems. But we got to look at it as an individual thing. Do you believe? If you believe, you can receive. So, once again, just want to thank you so much for coming, uh, rather joining us tonight at our prayer school here at Empowerment Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. Be sure to check out our other teachings on YouTube. I want to encourage you to join us on Thursday night for a personal uh, development. You get an opportunity to ask questions. It's an it's a interactive session where we're receiving teaching from Dr. Larry. And we are also able to ask questions to deepen our understanding because you're, you're hearing the words, you're receiving the word, but if you have questions, it's good to ask them and receive an answer, yes? So we invite you to join us on Thursday nights um, and also Tuesday nights uh, here at our prayer school and also on Sundays on uh, Zoom. Uh, notifications are sent out. And as always, we we'll remind you that the Father has plans for you that don't include defeat. Shalom. Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors is excited to announce our prayer school. Join us every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central for a power-packed teaching on prayer, followed by corporate prayer. Our school will teach keys and principles of prayer that will strengthen and improve your personal prayer life. We will stream on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you'd like to join us for prayer school or submit a prayer request, email us at eofkcprayer at gmail.com or text us at 901-206-3220. We hope you'll join us.